but they didn't. Why is that? Why didn't I, why did they not work on their margins and why did they just get the hell out and and burn millions and probably close to billions of dollars? Welcome back YouTube to the Financially Fit channel. My name is Colton. I will be your host today. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe and let's get into open door technologies. Guys, this one is a real tough one. I got to be honest. There's really two ways to look at this stock. Either you're going to own it for the business or you're going to own it for the assets. One is more expensive than the other, as weird as that sounds. So let's get into it. By the way, if you are new to the channel, do the right thing. Like and subscribe. Let's get into open door. First, I want to start out with exactly what is open door what is going on it's the whole i buying space right so a lot of these companies a lot of these real estate companies these tech companies started buying up real estate and this is exactly what their business model is what we're looking at right here they're acquiring properties through their platform and using algorithms from sellers and they're buying them at these prices. These are the average price points. So Zillow was buying them at 395, Op OfferPad's buying them at 271, and Open Door is in the middle, buying them at 365. Margins are at the bottom, guys. So Zillow recently exited out of this space for a few reasons. One, I think they see a housing market bubble, but two, the margins were just not worth it for them. They were starting to lose money and they just didn't think that the profitability was close enough little backstory on Zillow. They entered this space a little late. Open Door and OfferPad have been doing this for a few years. Zillow entered about three years ago and tried to play catch up and it was just a recipe of disaster for them. So recently Zillow's price has taken a huge hit and their financials have taken a huge hit as they started exiting out of this business model. But supposedly Open Door is acquiring a ton of properties and they're on the verge of profitability. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna dig into Open Door's financials and I'm gonna give you my two cents on what I'm seeing with Open Door. Guys, really quick, I don't wanna bore you, but I've been through this quarterly report and there is a lot in here. I have to be transparent with you. Open Door has a lot of layers to their business model. Very confusing, very, um, very extensive on how they make money, how they're borrowing money, how they're selling properties, how they're buying properties. And it's just very confusing, but I think I have it down to kind of, I can dumb it down to a simplistic form to hopefully where you guys can make sense of it as I'm still digesting it myself. So let's start out exactly with where they're at. And I'm going to start backwards from this quarterly report as it for me, it made more sense to work backwards in this. So guys, let's just start out with the fact that they are absolutely crushing home sold. In the quarter, they did almost 6,000 houses, which is up 4,756 homes. Guys, that is a huge number. It's almost mind-blowing when you really look at it. On top of that, uh, margins decreased a little bit net losses decreased by 24 million and adjusted EBITDA increased by 55.5 million. Here's what I want you guys to pay attention to. They've expanded into more markets and they grew inventory. They grew their inventory to $6.3 billion, which represents 17,164 homes, which is just crazy crazy numbers guys these are just ridiculous numbers it almost seems unreal here is the issue i looked at how their financing is going they have revolving credit guys of roughly three percent now they have a lot of different lines of credit ranging from 2.15 all the way up to 3.6 i believe it was but roughly the average looks to be right around three percent so we have to remember that, I want you to remember that 3% on the 6.3 billion because when we look at their assets and liability, there is some things that I have concerns of, there are some issues I have concerns with, and let's get into the assets and liabilities right now. First and foremost, we're gonna start with the cash position of this company. Right now they have $1.3 billion in cash. Pretty strong when we look at just the surface level stuff. They also have that 
almost 6.3 billion that we talked about in real estate as well, which gives them a grand total of almost 9 billion in assets, guys. So uh, they grew their assets from 2.1 billion to 9 billion. Sounds great on the grand scheme of things, but let's look at the liabilities. Liabilities have skyrocketed 10x, guys, going from 622 million to $6.6 .6 billion in liabilities, where most of that is coming from is coming from debt, which we can roughly average out to about 3%. Okay. Now in this quarterly report, they state their business model is flipping properties within a 70 to 100 day period. Okay. What is the problem that I have with this business model? I want to look at their financial statement really quick. As we can see here, the trailing 12 months is approaching $4.5 billion. Guys, they are going to probably exceed expectations and absolutely crush revenue by the end of this year. Okay, That is going to be clear as day. That is not what I'm concerned with. The revenue growth is not a concern for me whatsoever. Here's the concern I have. Cost of revenue has skyrocketed, guys cost of selling and general administration has skyrocketed, which gives them a negative $500 million operating. Okay. They they're losing $500 million in the year. Okay. This is the trailing 12 month losing $500 million. And as we can see, we bring the net income down and it is a grand total of actually 558.9 million trailing 12 months guys. Okay. <clears throat> that is what they're losing in the trailing 12 months. If I'm buying them for just owning the assets, guys, it's almost a net even, right? If you take out the assets minus the liabilities, you're at roughly at net 2.5 billion and it has a market cap of about 8 billion plus their growing revenue. So there is some asset value there, right? But my concern is owning it as a business model. If I'm, if they're burning almost 500 million in cash a year and they only have 1.3 billion on the revenue. I mean, they only have, if they're, if they're burning 550 million in cash a, a year and they only have $1.3 billion in cash on their, on their reserves, on their balance sheet, it's only got a few years of cash reserves, guys. The problem with this is everything almost has to run perfect for this business to succeed. My concern is Zillow exited for a reason. Zillow is not a dumb business, okay? Zillow is a very strong business model until they got into this space. They understand metrics and how and how real estate works. I would say that there are experts in the real estate business, okay? They exited on 5% margins. In my opinion, 5 to 10% margins is not a huge difference. Now, if you go from 10 to 20% margins, we're talking a big difference here. But five to 10%, in my opinion, is not a big dif is not a big difference. So, what am I trying to say? I'm saying the margins are probably good for open door. But if Zillow really thought this was an opportunity, wouldn't they have worked on getting these prices lower and growing their margins to 10%? I don't think it would have taken. I don't think it would have took them a lot of work to do that. Why didn't I, why did they not work on their margins and why did they just get the hell out and, and burn millions and probably close to billions of dollars? They, I think they see a bubble in this housing market, right? It's an extremely high, it's an extremely hot market. Inventory is extremely low and it is definitely a seller's market. And what are these, what are these people doing? They're buying houses in a seller's market not really a recipe for success, right? And I would probably say over the last two and a half years, it's been a seller's market. So will we see a buyer's market? Are we going to get a pullback in real estate? This is going to burn open door multiple ways if we get a pullback. One, these margins are razor, razor thin in the real estate market, guys. 10% in a real estate market is extremely thin. People fart 10% in real estate market, okay? Literally, it's... 10% comes and goes very fast in a real estate market. Let me give you an example. You put a house on the market for 300,000 and I come in and I offer you 270. Are you going to think about it? Most likely, yes, you are going to think about it, but I just took that 10% right from underneath you. So 
In my opinion, this is not a good enough, this is not a strong enough margin to get me excited. Let's just start out with that. Second problem I have with open door guys is what if interest rates rise, buyers come off the market and the market stays flat. They are holding on to $6.3 billion, guys. $6.3 billion, which they have to pay interest on, okay? Which means their burn rate is gonna go a much higher than 550 million, okay? So their burn rate's gonna go higher than 550 million if they have to hold properties because of a market slowdown. Along with a market slowdown, if the properties are held for longer than 100 days, what are some other things that have to take place, guys? They have to mow the lawns of these properties. They have to upkeep the electric. They have to make sure the roofs are not leaking. They have to make sure nobody's setting anything on fire or spray painting these houses, right? So there's damage control that takes place with these houses as well, which is more cost, okay? There's holding costs with these properties, guys. So they... As much as the numbers are mind-blowing, I look at this as a ticking time bomb overall, guys. I think that Open Door is an extremely interesting business model and is fairly cheap at the level that it's at right now, sitting at $14 a share. And by the way, when we look at their price, it was a 52-week high of $39.24 and a 52-week a low of $12.65. And we are currently sitting closer to that 52-week low. And in my opinion, I think it's for good reason, guys. I think that this is probably priced appropriately at these levels. So I would say be cautious of this one. The numbers look fabulous. It looks too good to be true. But when we think about a market shift, if we think about interest rates rising, if we think about um, any sort of pullback in the real estate market, if you get a combination of two, which you most likely will, guys, because here's what happens. When interest rates rise, prices have to come down. So if that happens, open door is going to get hammered two ways, guys. They're going to get hammered by having to bring the prices down, and they're going to get hammered by holding on to properties longer. So I just think this is a very dangerous play to be playing in an interest rate environment that could be rising, okay? Now, if interest rates stay low and the job market stays strong, this company is primed to, to do some big things here and hold a lot of assets and really control uh, an interesting part of the housing market, okay? But my concern is any sort of pullback can bring this company under and they will have to dilute to keep cash on their balance sheet at that point, all right? Guys, I hope you enjoyed my dive into Open Door Technologies today. As always, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for spending it with me, and we will see you next time, investors. Peace.